I'm a, a board member of uh, the Municipal Arts Society as well as uh, president of Swig Equities, a, a real estate company. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who attended uh, last year's inaugural summit for New York City, you witnessed the debut of an exciting online platform called uh, Betaville. Since the launch, we've seen the democratization of urban planning take hold as Betaville blossomed and is, be and is being deployed in various civic, cultural, and creative applications in seven cities worldwide. Just amazing. Uh, Betaville, a place for creative consensus building about the urban fabric, was, the only, was only at the beginning of a more comprehensive set of future-making capabilities. Now we'll hear from the innovators who shared the vision, uh, and they'll bring up the development and uh, practice of Betaville uh, and introduce that, the Situation Research Studio. So first, uh, I'll introduce uh, Carl Skelton, who's the founding director, director of the Brooklyn Experimental Media Center at New York, City's, uh, New York University's Polytechnic Institute, where he also directs the academic programs in integrated digital media. His experience uh, spans public multi, uh, multimedia art, community organizing, and software development for cultural and civic applications. Carl has two books forthcoming on Betaville, one, Soft City, Culture, the Betaville Project, and the second, the Multimedia Programming Facebook. And uh, as we welcome him, we want to welcome his mother here as also. Um, next, uh, Dr. Norman uh, Jackness is a globally recognized es expert in government innovation and transfer, uh, transformation. He's currently the director of Cisco's Open Information and Strategic Advisory Group, IBSG Public Sector Group. Before joining Cisco, Norman served for more than 10 years as CIO and Commissioner of Westchester County Government, where he was responsible for all government's technology, internet, and broadband activities, as well as technology-based uh, economic development. In addition to the county, he provided these services to municipalities and other non not profit uh, community organizations. Prior to his public service, Norman had a diverse uh, experience as an executive in the software industry with an emphasis on internet application and distributed uh, computing. Um, so welcome, and we look forward to listening to Betaville and seeing uh, what comes up next. Um, we're, this is how we're going to do. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, the backstory, some context. Uh, then you're going to mostly hear from Carl, who's going to bring you up to date and tell you where we're going in the future. And we're going to wrap it up by throwing out a little bit of a challenge to you. Uh, and uh, one of the things that um, was, has been most exciting to me about Betaville is uh, looking at what's been happening with the internet and citizen participation. Uh, you probably have noticed as the usage of the internet has grown over the last 10, 20 years, uh, there's been a decline of deference to public officials over that same period of time. People want to be part of the action. Uh, it's actually a part of the quality of life now that if there's an active citizen community. Uh, the problem with some of the ways that government has offered to citizens to uh, participate, uh, particularly over the internet, has been, been fairly limited. Uh, a lot of the stuff has dealt with abstract public policy issues, not very visual, and sort of puts a lot of people off because it, it doesn't deal with their concrete lives. Um, and, and secondly, a lot of it is an electronic form of petitioning the king, going back to an old tradition. So you get, as one person, you get to put your idea out to somebody, who knows who. Uh, but you don't get to collaborate with other citizens, so if you don't have all the skills to come up with a solution, you feel very inadequate. Um, Betaville solves both those problems, and that's one of the reasons it's very exciting, um, and is also a new way uh, for us to really redefine the uh, urban fabric for this century. And with that context, I'll turn it over to Carl. Thanks. The, um, <clears throat> what I hope to do is to make reasonable sense about moving from something that a lot of you may not have quite heard about in detail through to something even scarier than that. But uh, please feel free to ask us to fill in as we go. Uh, on this point of science fiction, uh, in 1992, David Galernter, who was a computer scientist, uh, one of the Unabomber's targets actually, uh, announced in a book uh, about what he called mirror worlds that these things were inevitable, that there would be soon and for sure 
virtual replicas of the cities in which you live to which you would go to get background information, to get the proceedings of matters of civic and other political import, to de debate and deliberate with your fellow citizens and officials and consult, uh, and indeed to vote in due course. That was science fiction in 1992. In 2008, uh, a group at Brooklyn Poly, led by myself and another group partnering with us at the Hochschule Bremen in Germany, uh, decided to not only get on with the business of making that actually happen, but to go one step further by making it possible for people to insert, propose specific changes to that model as you go. In this slide, this first slide here, what you see is a screenshot from Betaville, which has been up and running. Indeed, we demonstrated, the first public demonstration of it was at last year's summit. Uh, the, um, so an, an online platform, that model will now actually not only be compatible with, but also display uh, the official GIS data in real time. It's the same UTM projection as other GIS data standards. It is compatible with the state of the art of uh, web services for these kinds of applications. And indeed, now let me see here, uh, you see down at the bottom, it will also uh, keep track of how many proposals have been iterated and indeed of the discussion. It therefore has made the question of how the city might physically evolve into one of the things that this mirror world can do. It really works. Go to betaville.net. Uh, you can download the Dern thing and get started. If you can cope with SketchUp, you can be a proponent. Uh, if you can cope with a text input box and a couple of right-clicking maneuvers, you can be part of the debate. Um, this here, actually, let me just go back. Oops, not that far, this far. Uh, this, uh, down at the bottom here, is an imaginary modification to one of the buildings at Brooklyn Polytechnic, also known as the Polytechnic Institute of New York University now, uh, digging down the... Uh, Center for Innovation in Technology and Entertainment, as it was then planned to be, to create an open amphitheater with an LED mesh screen. That proposal did not directly occur, but it led to a conversation at the Downtown Brooklyn Partnership, which led to an open ideas, not exactly competition, involving the local colleges around the area about a thing called the Downtown Brooklyn Commons, uh, from which this is a screen grab. This was one of the very simplest proposals for a public artwork that could be seen from Google Earth uh, in the AstroTurf on the plaza. We also were able to propose very straightforward amenities for the park out through some things that were a little cheekier than that, uh, indeed, uh, to the level of a hypothetically possible reintegration of the functions of urban infrastructure and public art, which is a mashup uh, now that seems radical, but indeed was perfectly normal when the Brooklyn Bridge was built, a little vestigial when the Manhattan Bridge went up, and already unthinkable when they did Williamsburg. But in any case, this is probably the only bike lane concept Marty Markowitz has ever said anything nice about for the record. <laughs> um, there is hope for the formation of new coalitions, thanks to new concepts in their developability. Now, in the middle of the range of that particular proposal, uh, there's a building, a war memorial in the middle of Cadman Plaza. And so what I really wanted to do uh, was to pr propose that that be adapted and upgraded to act as the visitor's center, because the brief for the Brooklyn Commons uh, thing was about providing for an intensification of the use of Cadman Plaza as a link between the end of the Brooklyn Bridge and the waterfront and downtown Brooklyn. And I said, okay, if that were the visitor center, all of a sudden there's a place beyond the bridge where you can stop and have a Coke and get caught up. But this would also be the place where you could get the iPhone app that's a walking tour or a Janet Cardiff walk piece uh, or a place where the AR app would make it possible for you to look up and see where Dodgers Stadium was supposed to be. Uh, or another idea where Dodger Stadium might be as a lever uh, to make some kind of a sense of a very serious urban design problem at the end of the Brooklyn, at the end of the Manhattan Bridge on the Brooklyn side. Uh, at that meeting, 
Steve Levin, the city councilor for the area, said, uh, I want this to happen. What do I have to do? The Downtown Brooklyn Partnership said, can we make a meeting? Because we'd kind of like the idea of having an outcome from this kind of a thing that we've been doing. Um, the guy from Two Trees uh, cheered up tremendously and said, what do we have to do? Um, uh, Deborah Schwartz, uh, who has interests both historical and contemporary, who runs the Brooklyn um, Historical Society, said, come to my office next week, we'll do the numbers. Uh, and indeed, this initiative is in all likelihood going to be happening in some form. Um, so the science fiction uh, is coming fast. This was uh, a little treat along the way. Now here, we start to get into what we've been thinking about beyond already this question of the kinds of things that have become possible in Betaville in terms of low cost, rich, deep, ongoing collaborations, ideations between the cultural sector, artists and curators, and indeed political uh, representatives and the civil sector and professional agents and local stakeholders cooking ideas to be ready and mature and fun uh, when the concrete opportunities arrive. But now understand here, I'm an artist who set up an art and technology program in an engineering school in New York City because I wanted that to be the most fun. Uh, and also because I wanted to be able to do these things as a community organizer and a, you know, an artist for the public realm from Toronto. Uh, and one of the things that is now synthesizable, having spent some time in this combination of worlds, is that it is possible to go all the way back to Saint-Simon, the first guy who used the word avant-garde the way we use it now. That was to be a coalition of artists, scientists, technologists, and what he called industrialists, which is not the commercial sector so much as the people who make things on an ongoing basis in, normal, in the sense of ongoing production. Now, if we think of one of the ways to relate art to the other modes, the science fiction mode, the ideation mode, the this is a medium for the augmentation of collective imagination and ideation quite simply and literally, and that's not a fantasy, it works. Now, the, that can be as simple as the first piece of a workflow, the second leg of which is the kind of due diligence and could this work, might this work, would this work, are there things to do to this that would make it be a thing we should actually do, and then the business of getting on with how and when and where to actually do it. This is what I call the formula for a prescription strength avant-garde. And uh, that's basically the point I wanted to get to. We'll have a little bit of time if I need to fill in some gaps. I don't know, I live this stuff all day, but maybe Norm. I, I just wanted to add one thing. In, in addition to, to Betaville and, and this next generation Betaville sort of being a virtual space where mm -hmm. you can imagine the future of, of the city, uh, it also is in unique in a sense in that it allows you to imagine that, that image of the city that's very 21st century, where the city will be both virtual and physical. Um, and in a sense, uh, by, by using the virtual um, in conjunction with physical, you can create new forms of public art uh, that will attract people and make particular neighborhoods or locations destinations. Um, you can play with that in Betaville. That's one of the nice things about it, unlike tools that just are focused in on only the f built environment the same way we did 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I'd say is this is an open platform. And for those of you who have any technology background, this is open source, open development. Do you want to join in the game? Mm -hmm. You're welcome to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and we also want to encourage people to actually use this uh, in New York and elsewhere. Uh, to, uh, to help collaborate. Uh, innovation, as most, any of you have ever studied innovation, uh, you realize innovation does not come from some lone genius sitting under a tree. Uh, it's a social act, and uh, we hope the collaboration that this makes possible will help us come up with much more innovative solutions for New York. And, on that point, um, in fact, we've thought through a little bit of how the framework for such a thing might actually work in practical terms. Um, and what we are now on the point of proposing, this next step, so to speak, is a thing, what uh, Kent called the um, Situation Research Studio, 
uh, which we've, we've actually been tinkering with the name. It's one of those things that can drive you a little bit crazy. And you can, you can collaborate like with us and come up with a better name. There you go. <laughs> uh, but what we propose to do uh, at a practical level is to build out a, a sort of a blended reality think studio. And by that, what we mean uh, is uh, a, an, a sort of a, a group that could very intensively engage at a local level on site uh, a, an, again, an integration of, okay, this is what we're thinking about the physical form, the hard city. There are other things that are already latent in the capabilities of the soft city, the network of flows of information, of communication, of coalitions. And to be able, again, within you know, this other orthogonal integration of experimental art with the due diligence of what would work and what would be affected and how to think about these contingencies and, ex you know, and exchange ideas in a notion of a, an avant-garde that's broadened to include everybody that has something to say that has not been said, that has something to show that has not been seen. Those processes are now so easily doable, 24-7 ad hoc, when anybody can contribute, that we all actually have the benefit waiting in the wings of a latent, broader and deeper avant-garde. That business, that studio, so to speak, that we propose to integrate creative design solutions works, so to speak, of the art of municipal society, that can, of course, work very intensively locally to br elicit local capabilities. You arrive at a place, there are always things that nobody knows are there and dots to know how to connect, coalitions that can be built, and there are always gaps, capabilities that aren't local, that aren't available yet. Those can draw on the global network of these things. We have Betavilles now up and running for Leogan Haiti through Orphans International Worldwide and Architects for Humanity, and we have uh, a project coming on for Bremen to find alternatives to a very dumb idea for a shopping center in front of the train station. Uh, we have the thing I showed you in the works in Brooklyn, some other projects for Manhattan, uh, and we have Toronto and uh, Columbia University and the University of Toronto are using it for planning and design studios. Uh, Istanbul will be coming online. Vancouver is hassling us to get started. Uh, so that global network, and then that with the partners in Bremen who've built another layer out that goes from Shanghai uh, across all the way back to San Francisco with nodes in Lund in Sweden, in Copenhagen, and Gdansk, that all of a sudden can be brought to bear in where there are areas of comparative interest or existing experience uh, or analogous problems such as, for instance, this strange phenomenon of the expressways just short of the water, on the other side of which are tightly crowded areas where now the use and reuse and adaptation of public space is still primitive. That healing of the urban fabric is exactly the same question at certain levels in Istanbul. They've thought through certain things about it that we haven't and vice versa. We can actually work for each other in that particular case and a thousand others that a thousand others will already have been struggling with. I, the only thing I'd add is uh, Carl's email address is up there if you want to uh, okay. participate. Where'd it uh, go? Um, it should be up there. What it was up, up there? there. It's down here now. Okay. We went out of time. Oh, and okay. this, by the way, he's been working with MAS. So this is not just uh, a university uh, activity, but is actually, in a sense, uh, part of the, the new, newer mission that's been added on to MAS. All right. Thank you.